Friday. The casual miss of Friday. Put your jeans on, shorts. Beautiful day. I don't know where you are, but where I am, it is an absolutely gorgeous day. Thanks for joining me on this evening. It was a gorgeous day. It's now turning into a gorgeous night. Hot tub weather. We have a hot taxi. Great! Summer is coming to an end, but we got some nice weather to enjoy still, which is fantabulous. Thanks for joining me, Casual Friday, Digital Charcuterie. Here we go. We got some fun stuff to talk about. The null, 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 null. I got, like, eight years ago, six years ago, I got crapped on for my pronunciation of Thanos. I think I said Thanos once, and... In the comment section went wild. So now I'm going to say, no, 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 no. They're... Anyway, Venom 3 trailer drop. We're going to talk Venom 3, Star Wars, and whatever else is casual. We're going to talk about what we feel like talking about. I do want to talk about how Star Wars is not for everyone. But first, I think we're going to talk a little bit about Venom 3 because I'm excited for Venom 3. I was excited for Venom 1 and Venom 2. And if you go back, back, look in the archives. I did videos on this channel way, way, way back about my excitement for Venom 1, how I believed in Venom 1, and I'm still not sure if the movies are good or not. I, I don't know. I do enjoy them. Uh, Let There Be Carnage definitely felt like it was all over the place. I'm not sure it was the greatest movie. I love Carnage. Carnage was one of my, like, growing up, I had, like I loved Maximum Carnage playing that game. I love the comics, and I had the, I, like, I, the, you know, the Venom comics and whatnot were always great back then. This is like early 90s, late 80s, whatever. Early, early 90s? Mid 90s? Early 90s? Probably early 90s. I had a lot of fun with it. So I'm very excited to see what they do now. But they're bringing Null, 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 Null. And it's going to be, he's going to be uh, Norman Reedus is reportedly playing uh, the character. And this could tie into Spider Man 4, the upcoming Spider Man 4, where, if you remember Cosmic Circus a little while, they did an article and it was kind of about how. There's going to be uh, ground at street level, but also multiverse. And they're saying that perhaps Tom Hardy's Venom is being transported over to the MCU. And Noel Newell will also play a part in that. And that Noel will also be in Secret Wars, some of the Avengers movies. And, and those movies are going to put an end, a stoppage to the multiverse as a whole. Which is like, thank you. I'm very happy for that i'm okay with that i love the multiverse i think was fine for a while but it kind of got to be a little bit too much and like i'm like let's reel it in a little because then you know you go see movies and you know like people want to go see dr strange multiverse of madness it's in the title i get it but then when you don't get all the multiverse stuff that you think you are getting from a multiverse movie you get disappointed you you do right you start to get disappointed and that's what was happening a lot with these multiverse movies, for better or worse. And I'm ready to just move on. Just move on from the multiverse. Let's say, fun while you were here. Let's get out of it. And if and, and I think it would also be a fun way for Venom, Spider-Man, and Null Null to, to get together. And, and you know, Spider-Man and Venom more than anything. Every, every fan has been clamoring for this. And I've seen people online be like, we got three Venom movies with no Spider-Man. Now we have a young Peter Parker in it, which is why I think it can even work if they if they shift him over to the MCU. I don't know if they will. I think they had a perfect opportunity to do that for Endgame, right? Because of the way things ended there. But or was it Endgame or Far From Home or No Way Home or whatever the hell those movies are called? It was one of those where you're like, oh, maybe they'll do it. But they didn't. They had an opportunity. They didn't. So I don't know if they would at this point. But you bring in a character as big and grand as Noel Newell, you know, you, you get rid of Kang if you're the MCU. You bring in Johnny Depp. But is Johnny Depp going to be the big bad? Or maybe you use this character that's being established now. And even if you're not happy with the portrayal of that character in this movie or in this storyline, you can go ahead. But I would suspect that uh, we will all be very disappointed with the character at the end of this movie. And it will be a one and done. And uh, he will be deceased by the end of it. That's my... That if 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 watching these movies has taught me anything, it's that's where it's gonna go, right? Is it's all gonna end it with a whimper, and we're gonna we're gonna have all this build up, like, well, maybe we'll get a multiverse with Null, and then we won't, and it'll just be the ending, and that's it. It'll just end, and you know, it'll 
It'll ring some church bells and they'll all just die. It is the last dance. So I don't know. We'll see. There's a lot to, I, but I, like I said, I am excited for it. It's coming up pretty soon. So I, I am excited for it. The movies, you know, the first movie I really enjoyed. The second movie I want to enjoy more than I do. I've watched it. A, I own it. I watched it a bunch of times. I'm just, every time I watch it, I'm like, this movie is just so all over. It's so short and so all over the place. The length isn't a problem. It's just that it's, there's a lot going on. And it's just like, it's almost like, like it needs to just take a, a beat and just like, be like, it's okay. It's okay. Cause the slow parts are great. It's, it's fun though. It is a fun movie. And I, like I said, I own it cause I enjoy it. And I, Enjoy these movies for whatever reason. Better or worse, I enjoy these. I definitely enjoy them more than Morbius. But Morbius is the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, if, if this is if if the multiverse aspect is just this character and Venom coming over, like Nolan Venom coming over for Spider-Man 4, I'm okay with that. But Spider-Man, I don't know. Spider-Man is just like such a great character that he obviously works well with all of these elements, but I think just on his own doing whatever with his own universe is enough for me. I don't even, Spider-Man, frankly, doesn't even have to be in the MCU for, for me to, I mean, I, I enjoyed, you know, uh, the, the Sam Raimi and the, uh, and the web Spider-Man films without any indication of being in the MCU. I think they, they really want the sinister six, you know, Sony is like all about their sinister six. Oh. So is Null going to be in the Sinister Six? Is that what they're doing? Maybe there's no multiversal aspect to this. Maybe this is just Sony being like, bring in Null. It'll be Null. It'll be Rhino. It'll be Craven. It'll be Morbius. It'll be Madam Web. And that's our Sinister Six. Maybe they're doing that. Maybe that's their Sinister Six. Okay. Now I'm, you know, a little less excited. But, you know, if it's the multiverse thing, I like, I like that. I think it's it's fun, you know. I grew up Roger Rabbit was the coolest thing ever because it had Warner Brothers and Disney teaming up, right? Like, that's cool. When MCU, when Marvel and Sony team up and they they let, you know, when, so, so, uh, when Spider-Man gets to play with the Avengers, it's fun. You have fun. Some kind of, you know, I'll hold out hope for that. Like I said, I don't, I don't see that being the case, but I'm going to hold out hope for that because I can, and that's what I want. Let's go over to Star Wars. Acolyte petition to get season two renewed has hit 70, 70 or 75,000. It's hit a few thousand signatures to get that on. And look, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Acolyte. And, you know, I, I there are aspects of it, like I've said before, that I thought were, were great. I think they did a lot of really cool stuff. I don't, I just don't think that they. I don't think the execution was necessarily there at the end of the day. I wasn't a fan of of aspects of it. And when they and then when you see the ratings and they say that it's canceled, you completely understand why. Like people didn't watch the show. And then, you know, and then these petitions start and they're like, sign the petition. And it it's, you know, it's been like a month or whatever, and they just hit their first goal of like 70,000 signatures. And now it's going now their next goal is like 150. And it's like, good luck. Good luck. And that's no disrespect. Like, look, I love Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. I watch that movie way too often. I love it. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Also love it. Uh, there are movies that I love that are terrible. And I think we all do. Or there's shows that I love that are probably everything I watch you would consider terrible. And that's fine. And, you know, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, I didn't watch it when it first came out, so guilty as charged. But now I've read that they wanted it to be like a franchise, and it's never going to be a franchise. And I'm I'm okay with that. I've kind of cope with that. I do hope the Acolyte, they don't just kill the Acolyte. I hope that <clears throat> things from the Acolyte evolve and move on. And, and they don't they do not do a solo where they just forget Darth Maul and Kira. And I, I think the post, there's something that was mentioned. I think it might have been on Twitter. I'm not sure. But someone said, that ship has sailed. The Kira Maul ship has sailed. Let that go. And that's fair. That's completely fair because it's been years now since that came out. When did it come out? Twenty. 19 so it's been five and a half years since that thing came out that's a long time since a movie so it is you know th those parts of it are forgettable and you know at some point you've got to move on but in terms of the acolyte I, I i've said this enough where it ended where i wanted it to start and i know a lot of people who enjoyed the show i know a lot of people who didn't but i know a lot of people who enjoyed the show but at the end of the day it doesn't like and the thing is like if a, if a show or a movie succeeds or fails, that really it shouldn't have any effect on how you feel 
about it. Like, you know, the things that I like and don't like, but the things that I like that that fail, I don't take that personally. It's not a personal attack on me or my taste. I just happen to like something that majority of people didn't. And I know the acolyte, there's the, you know, they're saying that it was built up from beforehand and maybe, but if, but here, but the thing is like, if the acolyte was good, people would have shown up. Right. And, and if you're, and if you're selling a show to an audience that is greater beyond that is beyond your typical audience for your show and it doesn't do well that should tell you something and that's why I, you know i always see see the thing where everybody wants to be star wars is for everyone and uh, a, a few times i've kind of commented and tweeted out star wars is not for everyone and i firmly believe that it is not for everyone apples aren't for everyone People are allergic to that. Peanut butter is certainly not for everyone. It is delicious. <clears throat> it, can, it should be accessible to everyone, but it's not. People are allergic to apples. <clears throat> Star Wars, for me, <clears throat> is not an allergy, obviously, but Star Wars is not for everyone. It can't be for everyone. The reason I say that is because, you know, I brought this up on a podcast. I don't like, I'm not a fan of the Avatar I haven't seen the second one, but I don't. I'm not a fan of the first Avatar movie. It's not for me. And James Cameron, I don't expect him to make the next Avatar movie to get me to watch it. And Star Wars, I think, falls into a trap, especially with fandom, like the fans online, especially. They they think that they own it. They're like, it's for everyone. So let's change what it is. Let's change what it's about. Let's change, you know, who the target audience of Star Wars is because it's for everybody. But it's not for everybody. People just don't like Star Wars. And if you don't like Star Wars, when they make a Star Wars movie movie or show, the people who don't like Star Wars are not going to like that show. Now, obviously, there's always, you know, something that can sneak in and be like, you know what? I actually kind of like that Star Wars. But I've known a lot of people growing up. I'm old. I've known a lot of people growing up that absolutely hate Star Wars. They're like, I do not like Star Wars. I can't stand it. When Disney bought them, they're like, I hate Star Wars. I never wanted to see another one again. I was hoping they never make one. And now we're going to get them till the end of time. Those people exist. And, and when you try to make something for that group of people, it's you're never going to hit. And all you're going, and what you're going to do is you're going to turn away the people that are already there. Because now the people that like Star Wars are watching a Star Wars and they're saying, but this isn't why I watch Star Wars. I watch Star Wars for X and Y and you're giving me ZZ, 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 Z. And you're giving me this and I want this. And that's not to say there can't be uh, variations of it. Obviously, you know, children's books, YA novels, animated series, live action, children's animated series, Young Jedi Adventures doesn't like it, it that should be what it is but when you get to a point when you're making a series when you're making a show and you're spending 180 million dollars 180 180 million dollars on an eight episode show you damn well better be sure that that show is for the people that are going to watch that show because it's on a streaming service. And if you make it for anybody else, and if you come out before the show comes out and you tell people, if you, you know, this show is like, it's this and this, and, and you have all these weird, like, and I honestly don't buy into this stuff. Cause I also don't care. Cause I'm old and I don't care, but there's a lot of like, you know, buzzwords that they use to promote this show. And then you see interviews and, and, and you know, when the interviews are happening, the interviewers aren't, dumb they're not dumb they know that they're going to get that sound bite that's going to go viral they don't care if it's a positive spin on your show or not they don't care and so they're going to get that that audio clip they're going to have a clip that's going to make its rounds you don't know the context of it you don't need to know the context of it and if you don't believe me just think of all the articles on any side of any any dilemma on any you know any side of any argument ever in the last like five, 10 years, when the internet's been mass, social media has been massive, you don't know the context of the stories you're reading. You see the headline. And that headline piece 
is all you know. And the headline is not the context of the story and you don't know what's going on. And so the people asking the questions, they know what they're doing. There's context to it, but you know, they know that you're going to watch it. You're going to take it out of context and then it's going to go viral and their face and their name and their stupid YouTube channel, their stupid website, whatever it is, it's going to go viral with them. Star Wars, and I say this on the Rebel Scum podcast, they have a PR, massive PR problem. That's a completely separate issue. They got to clean that up. Figure that out because that's a mess what goes on in Star Wars land. Complete mess over there. But Star Wars isn't for everyone. So when you have that, so when you start off with clickbait articles with no context, the people that are in your court are seeing that the clickbait is saying that this ball is not in the same court. Why are they going to watch your show? Why are they going to watch this? If this isn't Star Wars, why am I going to wa- I watch Star Wars. If you're telling me this isn't Star Wars, why would I watch it? So, again, it's not for everyone. And I'm not saying it's just for the fans. Like, new fans come all the time, and it's how you get into it. And I think The Force Awakens, which is my least favorite sequel. Come at me. It's my least favorite sequel. It's a lot of fun. I say it's all the time. It's a donut. Empty calories. It's delicious. But it brought a lot of new fans in. And the thing that it did, and I think, I, I do, I think like there's some stuff in it that really, that really, really ticked me off at the time. Like I couldn't understand. Didn't what was I just felt like there was a lot of lazy writing in it. But all that being said, it was so much fun. It brought a lot of new fans in and a lot of joy was brought with it, right? It's such like the thing with that movie is for all of its shortcomings for me, it's like, it's still, it feels like so innocent, right? You watch, you're like, this is a good time. This is a good time. It's harmless. You know, this is good. This is good. And it did it right. It brought new fans in and it kept the old fans happy. And that's what you do. And you, so you didn't change what Star Wars was. You reminded everyone why they love Star Wars. You remind them why they love it. And this is part of the problem is you can't make something for everyone or no one's going to be happy. No one. Because now you, you know, you bring new friends, new, uh, new friends, you bring new fans in with, with context, content X. When the next one comes out, the old fans that are like, well, they stopped making stuff that I like. They're not showing up for that. And then the new fans are going to put that on. They're like, well, this isn't what I came for this for. Like the people who like the Acolyte, Skeleton Crew doesn't look like it's made for fans of the Acolyte. And, 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 and you got, I, I don't know what it is. Like you got to figure out a tone. And I've said this before. They need to sit down in a room, dark Aaron Rodgers dark room is what I said. You got to go in the room and come up with a five-year plan. And I think, I think even you can do different genres within Star Wars, even though Star Wars is sci-fi fantasy, which we shouldn't forget, but you can do different little things in there and kind of do sci-fi fantasy with the Goonies twist, with the YA twist, which I think Acolyte was. As long as the audience feels like we know where we're going, I think we a lot of people will be along for it. And, and I know that I sound like I just contradicted myself, but what I'm saying is when you throw something new at me, not me, but the general royal me is that a, is there a royal me there's a royal you when you throw stuff that's different that's not what we're used to what we what we come for like you don't listen to your favorite band to hear them change you know to hear a different artist right you listen to the band that you like because that's what you like right that's what you enjoy it's a comforting sound it's a familiar sound they bring they're the only ones that bring that sound star wars is the same star wars is the only one that brings that feel that brand to you and when you go outside and you change it it's fair not to enjoy it also you got to remember that too I, I'm, not, I'm not saying go online and bash it every day and you know all the other things that come with it. you but you can go on and you can discuss your displeasure with it that's completely fair i think it's also fair to talk about what you love about it and if you're in a minority look i look last year two years ago when the mandalorian three come out season three I went online live alone when we couldn't do the podcast and I talked how much I love those episodes and that season of the show. And I stand by that. And I was in the minority on that one. A lot of people didn't, but I went on and I said, this is what I like about it. And if anyone challenged me and they said they didn't like it, I'm not, I didn't, you know, I'm not going to smack them around and say, you're wrong. Get off my channel. No, I listen to what they have to say. As long as they're res- like, be respectful to me, I'll be respectful for you, to you. But that's like it's a give and take on that end. And so I, th- I just think that when it comes to Star Wars, when you lose sight 
of what your brand is, which is what's happening now. You lose sight of what your brand is. You lose your fans. You lose a chunk of the fandom. And now, you know, you see online the big, we've talked about this, you know, we talked about this here and I talked about it on Rebel Scum and everybody on YouTube has talked about it, where there's that YouTube war, the civil war of YouTube. That's what happens. Because somebody didn't like something, somebody liked it, and God forbid anyone has a different opinion, there's a bit that, you know, everybody's in uproar over it. And I think it's fair not to like, I like Mandalorian season three quite a bit. I love Book of Boba Fett. I love Book of Boba Fett. I want to lie. I talked about that too. People can't, people, they didn't come at me. I shouldn't word it like that. But it, there were conversations like, how did you, why did you, I don't understand how you like that. And it's like, just be a civil. It's all subjective at the end of the day. You can love the accolade. I don't have to love it. You can love the accolade. But I think you also have to, have to respect the fact that it wasn't watched. People didn't watch the show. And people were watching it, and the viewership started to grow. And then episode three happened, and everybody just jumped ship. And a bunch of people came back for the ending to see how it was going to wrap up. And that's it. So it's not for everyone. Don't make your show for everyone. Twitter, you know, the self-righteous on Twitter can all say, it's for everyone. Everyone should like Star Wars. Yeah, but they're not going to. They're not, and I'm, and by, I'm not saying Star Wars, like Star Wars is not offensive. Let's be real. Like Star Wars is not offensive. It's not about putting people down. And it's, it's, it's not about a lot of things. And George Lucas came out, come out and say what he wants to say now that it's, but really it's a fun swash, swashbuckling adventure at the end of the day. And they can have undertones of messages, blah, 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 undertones. And people are going to be accept, accepting of it. And that's what it is. And it's not for everyone because not everyone's going to like it. Nobody likes everything. And like I said, the minute you make something for everyone, you lose everyone. So you, you you have no one left. Everyone just well, I, that's not what I. That's not for me. I don't care. And then you, you're like, oh, the next one's not going to be for me either. And you go down that. And then when you come in and you're like, oh, this was great. I love this. And you see the next one, you're like, well, that's not for me. So you're 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 losing one because you're trying to get another, but then you're losing that other because you don't have an identity anymore. Star Wars needs an identity. And right now, at this present time, it's up to the Mando and Grogu movie to get it one. It's up to that. Because Ahsoka might, but after season one, I don't have much faith. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I thought Balin and Shinhadi were fantastic characters, but I don't... I think Thrawn and Ezra came, whatever. Like They could have done that without a series. It just... I'm not sure where my, I'm not sure where my confidence on Ahsoka season two is just yet. End or season two is going to be great, but ends in Rogue One. Well, I know it ends in Rogue One. Like I know where it ends. It's not. It's not going to do anything. So I, I I think it's up to Mando and Grogu right now to really kind of be like, hey, this is this is what Star Wars is. Then the Ray movie has to follow that, or whatever movie's coming next. Supposedly the Ray movie. I also have my doubts on that, but whatever movie's coming next, that's going to be like, I got your back. I'm backing up what you're doing. So don't worry about, like, if you're worried about new fans, just trust that they're going to come by bringing the content, by, I don't, you know, let's not use content, by bringing the stories, by bringing the Star Wars that everyone knows and loves. That's what the brand is. It's Star Wars. That's what we're here for. Star Wars. Don't try to be Hunger Games. Don't try to be Goonies. Maybe, I don't know. Don't try to be Goonies. Don't try, don't try to be Planet Captain Planet. Don't try to be Darkwing Duck. Try to be Star Wars. Succeed at Star Wars and you will earn like the Force Awakens is just that's that is what Star Wars should aspire to be for the most part. I mean, but a little bit more fleshed out with a plan. Force Awakens with a plan is what Star Wars needs to be. Bring in the new fans and appease the old fans. They changed it up. To, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of a rehash, but they changed it up a little bit. I thought the humor was pretty strong. Finn, I think Finn's one of the great characters. Kylo Ren was great. Rayan was pretty good in that one. Um, who else was in that? Maz sucked. Maz was terrible. Chewie was great. Like they, they like Chewie was great. Luke was, you know, I, I still think those movies overvalued. Uh, Luke Skywalker. Like they didn't. Anyway, that's that's something I've talked about ad nauseum. Uh, so I won't. And if you want to know, let me know and I'll talk about it. But yeah, so just. It's not for everyone. Don't pretend it's for everyone. Make and you know what? I appreciate. I do appreciate though when a when a 
a creative try something and they fail because at least they tried at least they gave it a shot you know what that didn't work that didn't work but i don't think you know you shouldn't you shouldn't try to get a new audience you shouldn't try to you should you know you should stick to your audience you know when the band changes genres they usually go back to what they're known for right away all right everybody thank you so much for watching hit that subscribe button uh, if you have if you're new here if you like the video hit the thumbs up if you didn't like it hit the thumbs down you being here helps out so much i really appreciate it enjoy your weekend it's friday casual friday enjoy everyone i'll talk to you guys uh sometime probably next week um yeah <laughs> maybe be the master of your own universe bye